my next guest, you know, Dr. Dinesh D'Souza. Now, he's a well-known New York Times best-selling author, but he also now is best known for his movie, 2016. Doctor, how are you? They're good to be on the show. Uh, thank you very, very much for coming aboard. But I'm going to have you, I'm going to run some clips, have you uh, uh, make some comments. But I first want to talk about that comment. Now, what should liberals take away from Michelle's speech last night, that little piece I just focused on, about values, when this year alone she spent our money, not hers, $10 million on these lavish vacations to Hawaii and other destinations? Yet, in your movie, it shows that Obama's aunt, who has to sell coal on the street, lives in a shack for $2 a day to survive, that's what she sells, as the brother, I, I thought charity began at home. So my question is, what should liberals take away from this? Isn't it uh, hypocrisy? I think what <laughs> liberals should take away that our money belongs to Barack Obama and his money belongs to Barack Obama, right? In other words, there's, a, there's sort of a sense here that he's articulating standards for the rest of us, but he isn't willing to live up to himself. To give you a small example, there's a school in a small village in Kenya, Kogelo. This is where his father was raised. Obama went to visit the school in 2006. The school was so excited he was coming, they renamed the school Barack Obama School. Uh, he toured it and he said, oh, I see you guys don't have textbooks, you don't have sanitation, you don't have facilities. I will take care of the school. That's the last they've heard of him. This is six years ago. The school has written him countless times. They've written the White House, no response. So this is a pattern with Barack Obama. Uh, he lives high on the hog, 100 rounds of golf, takes two planes when it's convenient. Um, and, uh, you know, Michelle, as we all know, $500 sneakers and next extravagant jewelry. Meanwhile, they won't help other people, even in their own family, and they make pledges that they won't keep. So I think that a lot of what's going on in, in Charlotte is a bit of a sham because it's giving the American people this idea that these are wonderfully compassionate people, but the record doesn't support that at all. And, and I guess and I guess if they say they don't care about money because they got, as you point out, they got plenty of our money, our tax dollars, the $10 million she spent on vacation. So it is hypocritical. Oh, my God, it's unbelievable. But to, to I also uh, want to ask you, too, doctor, you're, you're, you're a well-known author. Why a movie? Well, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm an author. I've written now 12 books. The latest one is about Obama, by the way. It's called Obama's America. Right. Um, and it does lay out what the country would look like in the next four years if Obama got a second term. But I feel that a film is a different way to communicate it. It actually engages pretty much all the five senses. It can tell a story. And the thing about Obama is he does have a riveting story. It's a story essentially of a abandonment. You have a fractured soul who was dumped by his father at birth and abandoned by his mother at the age of 10. Uh, and if you look at pictures of Obama in those years, he was, he was short, he was fat, uh, he was insecure, very shy. So somehow this, uh, this rotund, insecure kid uh, created for himself a, a new identity and a new ideology. And unfortunately, that ideology happens to be one of shrinking America. So uh, that's what he's doing. He's basically shrinking our economy. He's transferring wealth to other countries. He's reducing America's imprint in the world. And my point is he's doing this all deliberately. It's not like he's, he's, it's all accidentally happening. He wants it to happen because he subscribes to an ideology that would like to see a smaller America. You were on uh, Bill Maher show the other day, or the other evening, rather, last week. I want to play a couple uh, clips. I don't think he was very fair to you, so this I'll give you an opportunity to answer. He never gave you an opportunity, but I will give you an opportunity to answer the question. Let's play the first clip. And you believe that Obama's anti-capitalist? I believe that Obama is anti-capitalist, yes. But there is no evidence for that. Yes, there is. What is that? Well, the evidence is that... Ob he saved well, no, 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 no. Let's put it my way. He appointed He's... Noam Chomsky Secretary of the Treasury? <laughs> I mean... No. This... The evidence is this. He has fundamentally altered the relationship of the citizen to the state. Let's look at the... There's been a federal incursion into a whole bunch of fields. Uh, hospitals, insurance, banking, finance, automobiles, energy. Now, you may think it's all justified, the, but well, the federal all, these government... these things are all hardly unprecedented. Yes, unprecedented. he saved the automobile industry, same as Reagan did with Chrysler. He, there was a stimulus program. Presidents have always done this. No, when no. There was a recession. Bush did it you only need, but four let's years ago, sent everybody checks when there was a recession. All right. First of all, first of all, he doesn't know what he's talking He says, where's the evidence? Now, before you answer, I want to play one more clip of what Obama said 
it, to me that pointed out that uh, it makes the argument that he's a closet communist, if you will. Listen. One of the, uh, I think, uh, the tragedies of the civil rights movement was um, because the civil rights movement became so court-focused, uh, I think that there was a tendency to lose track of the political and community organizing and, and activities on the ground that are able to put together the actual coalitions of power through which you bring about redistributive uh, change. Uh, and uh, in some ways, that, we still that, suffer. That, that. There, there it is right there. What evidence does he need? Well, the thing is, you know, Bill Maher is, uh, here's the point, that we got to keep things in proportion. So, for example, people complain about the Reagan spending or the Reagan deficits. Well, Reagan's deficits were $200 billion a year. Now, George W. Bush was a much bigger spender, and his largest deficit ran $500 billion a year. But the Obama, the lowest Obama deficit is over a trillion. Every single year, Obama has run trillion-dollar deficits. So this man has added $5 trillion to the national debt in four years. And again, my, my guest uh, today is uh, Dr. Dinesh D'Souza. And he, of course, uh, everyone, I hope you see his movie. I hope you go see it, 2016, o Obama's America. Uh Another question that people ask me all the time is that uh, many call Obama a closet communist, not because so much of his liberal thinking and a lot of his followers, like this young uh, uh, lady that uh, right here. I won't have to worry about putting gas in my car. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage. You know. I don't know if you remember that, but when he got elected, it's the first thing we heard. You mean I, it's all, all the free stuff. Yeah, right? she says, yeah, I don't have, she got elected. He won. I don't have to pay my car. I don't have to pay my mortgage. So my point is, that's that's the, the vision that most of the people have, and they call him a, a, a closet communist. But what I get upset with, and what you point out in the movie, is not so much because of his liberal thinking, but his association with Marxist communists, like the terrorist educator Frank Marshall Davis. You've got the terrorist Bill Ayers, Derek Bell, Reverend. James Wright. Uh, so when people say he's a socialist or a communist, um, you know, how far off are they? Is he a closet communist or closet socialist? Well, I think uh, the socialist label is closer to the truth because, you know, remember Obama's father, you know, was a socialist, wrote a famous article called Problems Facing Our Socialism. But I think he embedded the socialism inside a larger anti Western, anti American. Uh, or as I call it, anti-colonial ideology. The basic idea here is that America is the rogue nation in the world. You know, it's not Iran, it's not North Korea, we're the bad guys. And so just as Reagan worked hard to contain the Soviet empire, which he called the evil empire, I think for Obama, the evil empire is the United States. And what has he been doing? Obama's been slashing on nuclear weapons. Uh, he's been reducing uh, America's influence in the Middle East. He's actually been undermining America's allies there, like uh, Israel, but also Mubarak in Egypt. Um, he strengthened the hand of our enemies. Now, again, it's not that Obama's a traitor. It's just that he thinks it's good for the world and good for America for us to play a smaller role in the world and for our wealth and power to be redistributed globally to other nations. Well, and again, it does bother me that... Uh, <laughs> who his friends are. But let's go back to the movie. When a liberal walks out of that movie, or anyone, what do you, and you're standing there, what, what would you want, if you're overhearing the conversation, what would you hope that they are getting out of the movie? Well, I think that whatever your politics, I can guarantee you that you'll walk out of this movie 2016 and you're going to say, I know a whole lot about Barack Obama that I didn't know 90 minutes ago. Now, if you're a liberal, you're faced with a conundrum, a dilemma, which is that you go in and you might think Obama is some kind of a progressive. He wants to redistribute money in America. And you realize, wait a minute, he do, he's not a conventional liberal. He doesn't just want to redistribute money in America. He wants to realign America in the world. He doesn't want America to be number one. He'd be really happy if we were number eight or number 17 or number 35. So as a liberal, you've got to say, do I want that for America? Would I, do I want a smaller American dream? Do I want my children and grandchildren to owe more money, not live as well, use less energy? Do I want America to be less important in the world? If so, I'd say, go right ahead, vote for Barack Obama. But on the other hand, if that's not what you want, uh, then you actually have a problem. 
you know, like building a house, we, we it's just many times all of us going through this in our life, we said, you know, I'm going to buy a house, but I think I'm going to build it because I want that house exactly. I know exactly what I want, and I'm going to build a house instead of buying one. It's the same with a film. I mean, you're going to do your own film. You, you feel you know exactly what you want to put in the film. But like a house, when you finish, you go, oh, damn, <laughs> I wish I did something different. Give me, uh, when you look at the film, you complete it, you saw it in the theater, tell me something that you would get. ah, you know, I should have put this in, or I wish I took this out and put this in or added well, to it uh, certainly you know a couple of things have happened since the film obama's famous or infamous phrase you didn't build that is so perfect because it embodies the ideology the anti-colonial view that wealth is not earned but is stolen um the anti-colonial view is that look the reason britain and france became rich is that they went to other countries and right. ripped off all their stuff all their raw materials all their minerals and so on and of course and of course that's what obama was saying to business guys that wealth is created mm -hmm. by society then you greedy, selfish entrepreneurs swoop in and take it all. You don't have any right to it. It's not yours. We, the government, have the right to confiscate it because it isn't right. yours in the first place. Now, we got about 10 seconds left. I've got to ask you this because you are a capitalist. How well, how well is the movie doing? What did it cost you to make? And what kind of money do you think this movie you'll make on this movie yourself? The, the, the film cost uh, two and a half million dollars to make. It's already made twenty million dollars. It's on its way to becoming the second most successful documentary <laughs> film of all time. Well, congratulations, and that will keep liberals up all night. <laughs> again, Doctor, thank you so much. Let's do this again. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. You're listening to Phil's Gang on the Off the Wall Street Radio Network. We'll have more in just minutes.